I don't know about you, but um, I grew up in a generation that played outside. I don't know what's up with this new generation. All they want to do is play PlayStation and Xbox, Netflix, on the computer, social media. But I come from a time where when we wanted to have fun, we didn't find it in front of a screen. Come on. We went outside. Now, some of us ain't really had no choice because we had parents, aunties, and uncles who, whether you wanted to go outside and play or not, sent you outside to play. And when you're outside in the hot sun all day, you either got to find something to do or pass out from it, from heat talk. And so as children, we would find little games to play. We would play games like hide and go seek. We would play games like uh, leapfrog. We would play games like freeze tag. We would always cheat. Everybody cheated. Don't act like you ain't cheating when you play them games. But, but we would find things to do outside. Well, there's a particular game that is a children's game that we used to play back in the day called Follow the Leader. Can I tell y'all the rules of this game? Y'all yes, gonna cheat anyway, but I'm gonna still tell you the rules. Uh, the way the game works, one child is chosen to be the leader. And after the first child is chosen, the remaining children line up behind the leader. And here's the whole premise of the game. In order to remain in the game, the children behind the leader must copy all the actions and movements of the leader. So if I start doing jumping jacks, if you behind me, you got to do jumping jacks. If I start spinning in a circle, you got to start spinning in a circle. Uh, if I do a cartwheel, you got to do a cartwheel. Whatever the person in the front does, those behind them have to do. That's the only way that you stay in the game. But if you fail to do, if you fail to miss a single movement, you are automatically out of the game. Uh, so according to the gospel of Ludacris, the way this game works is if I move, you move just like that. Y'all right. Say, my God. You done told on yourself. Everybody at the altar. Everybody. The key to winning the game is I have to do whatever the leader does. Now, some of you are saying, what in the world does this have to do with Psalm 23, 5 and 6? Well, I told you last week that there are certain places uh, that the master will lead us when we're following him. Today, I want to share with you that there are certain blessings when we follow the leader. And so with that said, we'll uh, just give a good breakdown of the scripture and then I'm going to jump in. Is that all right? I'm a yeah. teacher preacher, so I like to lay a foundation. So if we was to break this text up, uh, the first thing we'll see is that uh, David reveals what God prepares for him. We see that in verse five. He prepares a table before him, but it's, it's not just any table uh, and it's, it's not just anywhere, but he does it in the presence of his enemies. And we love to shout on that part of the text, but y'all don't even really know what y'all shouting about. Mm -hmm. But that's why y'all come to AL3C, because you're going to learn today. Uh, the next thing we see is that David reveals what God pours on him. So he, he reveals what God uh, prepares before him, but then he reveals what God pours on him. He says he anoints his head with oil. And as a result of anointing his head with oil, his cup runs over. This is why you want to be anointed. It's one thing to be gifted, but you want to be anointed. Why? Because when you're anointed, your cup is never dry. That was shoutable. But next, uh, next point, David reveals what God allows to pursue him. So we see what God prepares before him. We see what God pours on him. But then we see uh, what God allows to pursue him. He says, goodness and mercy follow me. And as a bonus, I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. So that's what we're looking at in the text. We see what God prepares for him. We see what God pours on him. And, and he reveals what God allows to pursue him. Y'all ready to get into this text? Y'all sure? Yes. I ain't lose y'all. No. Okay, cool. Now, I got a lot of Hebrew today because when I started to break down the original language of Psalm 23, revelation was everywhere. I don't even know if I'm going to get through all this today. So I hope y'all came to get a lot. Is that all right? Yeah. All right. So I'm sharing with you today three prizes. Somebody say three prizes. Three prizes. The Lord may bless you with when following him. We're going to look at three prizes that the Lord may bless you with when following him. Now, I'm going to tell you why some of y'all can't shout. Because y'all ain't been following the Lord. Y'all been following church. And when you follow church, ain't a whole lot of prizes there. But David reveals to us that when we follow the Lord, there's a whole lot of prizes. 
Uh, can I tell y'all the first prize that uh, the Lord may bless you with when you're following him? Come on. Y'all ready? Um, you sure? Yes. Nudge your neighbor real quick. Say, neighbor, you ready? Yes. All right. The first prize the Lord may bless you with when following him mm -hmm. is he will prepare a table before you. Yes. He will prepare a table mm -hmm. before you. I'm not making it up. It's how verse 5 starts. He says, thou preparest a table before me in the presence of of mine enemies. Mm -hmm. Now, the first thing we, we really got to wrestle with here is who is my enemy? Come on. I know you think you know your enemy, but who really is your enemy? That's well, right. I need to know what David was talking about. What enemies were David talking about? Was David talking about? And so I looked up that word enemies uh, in the Hebrew, and it's the word sarar. Sarar, T S A R A R. And it means enemy, it means enemy, but this one right here, my God, when I tell you hit home, it's vexer. And harasser. He says, I will prepare a table before you in the presence of those folks that vex your spirit. Wow. I will prepare a table before you in the presence of them folks that's harassing you. Oh, my God. I, I, some of y'all, y'all must only be surrounded by good folks, but I got some folks at work. That vex my spirit and harass me. I, I got some folks in my family. Yeah. Not my cousin Kiki, but they vex my spirit <laughs> and harass me. Can I be all the way honest this morning? It's some folks in this church, and I'm going to just look this way, that on certain days vex my spirit and harass me. Don't nobody know who I'm talking about? The shoe fit. Shame on you. He says, I'm going to prepare a table before you in the presence of the folks who vex you and harass you. So it's not just the folks that attack you, it's the folks that annoy you. Wow. Mm. Mm. I, I think we've been wow. going a little too deep, because can I be honest? Yeah. Some of y'all ain't got the haters that you think yeah. you have. Come on, talk about it. Some folks just annoying. Yeah. <laughs> and some folks are annoying not because you're so great. They just annoy you. I know it makes you feel good to put your stunning shades on and act like you so important and that folks just can't stand you. But the truth of the matter is, sometimes our life is just filled with annoyances because the enemy's always trying to get us off the path. And there are strategic people that will be sent in your path to get you off the path because when you're following the Lord, he knows that there are prizes involved. He says, he prepares a table before me in the presence of my enemies, those that vex me and harass me, but but what exactly does he mean by prepare? Mm -hmm. Oh, this was good. It's the word arak in the Hebrew, and it doesn't just mean prepare, but it means to arrange. Mm -hmm. Specifically, it means to arrange dishes. Now, this blesses me because normally the folks that vex your spirit and harass you are folks who don't want to see you eat. Mm -hmm. Wow. Mm -hmm. And what he says is, I will prepare a table <laughs> before you in the presence of the folks who don't want to see you eat. Y'all are missing it because you think when I say prepare that it's already there, but don't miss it. it. He says, I'm going to arrange the dishes, which means the very folks who vex in your spirit, the very folks who are harassing you are going to have to watch God arrange plates in front of you. Ah, Y'all are missing it. In other words, the folks who swore God wasn't moving in your life is going to have to watch God move in your life. And can I be honest with you? Nothing vexes a person like that spirit more than watching God move in your life. <laughs> can, I, can I tell you why I don't fight with folks and I don't argue? Because I know I'm following him. Yes. See, you ain't got to fight. All you got to do is follow. Because if you follow... God will move. Yes. And nothing vexes their spirits more than to watch God move in the life of someone who they swore God won't move in. Yes. They're going to watch God arrange plates in front of me, in front of the folks who wanted me to starve. Yes. That's beautiful to me. Yes. But as Mother Dawson would say, it gets gooder and gooder. <laughs> uh, he prepares a table for me. Now, we know what it means to prepare, but can we talk about this table? Because y'all don't understand how significant this table is. Mm -hmm. This ain't just any table. In, in, in the Hebrew, it's the word shulkan. Shulkan. Listen, y'all going to be theologians when y'all leave here today. Show off at Red Lobster when you get there. Be like, uh, let me share some Hebrew with you. Shulkan. 
And it means table, but my God, I just want to jump out my, my, my jeans. Uh, uh, it says, for kings repast private use. Yeah. I said that too fast. Yeah. In other words, this ain't just a table. Uh-huh. It's the king's table. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah. He says, he will prepare the king's table uh-huh. for me uh-huh. in the presence uh-huh. of the folks who said I was a peasant. Yeah. Uh, he, he's going to prepare an important table in front of me in the presence of the folks who said my life meant nothing yeah. it's the king's table and it's the king's table prepared for the king's meal <laughs> it's a private party and ooh that just messed me up in other words he says I'm going to send an invitation for a private party to the folks who never wanted to celebrate you anyway God's get back is untouchable. And this is why I don't fight my own battles, because God can get folks back so much better. Listen, I know I'm top-level petty, but I'm not God-level petty. God operates on a level of petty that is mind-blowing. He says, not just any table, it's the king's table, but y'all missed the revelation. King David is writing this song. But here's the problem. Theologians believe that Psalm 23 was not written when he was a king. Mm-hmm. It was written when he was still a shepherd. Wow. Y'all missing it. Wow. David is a shepherd, but he says God is going to prepare a king's table for me. In other words, David was declaring prophetically where he was going. Wake up, church. David caught the revelation of Jeremiah 29 and 11. Yes. For I know the thoughts I think towards you, yes. thoughts of peace and not of evil. Yes. Here it is. And to give you an expected end. I'm so glad I serve a God who has already made reservations in my future yes. for the table that belongs to me. In other words, what David is saying is that God has prepared a table not just before those people, but he prepared me above those people. Yes. And my God, nothing vexes a hater spirit more than to see the person they thought was beneath them. God elevate them above them. And can I tell you why I ain't never trying to impress y'all? Because the Bible don't say promotion comes from you. It says promotion don't come from the east or the west, but promotion comes from the Lord, who has the power to raise up one and set down another. When I follow the Lord, he prepares a table not just before my enemies, he messes around and puts me above them. He prepares a table before you in the presence of your enemies. Now, now that word before, that word before, because I, I think many times we think that the haters or the vexers and the harassers are, are on the outside looking in. Uh-uh. No, no, no. Uh, uh, this word before, uh, it means, it's the word neged, and it means in front of, but it's this latter part that just messed me up, uh, in front of to the mortification of. Now, mortification is one of them big SAT yeah. words. Y'all like Pastor Mike? Yeah. Listen, my degree ain't in English. My degree is in something else. You got to break this thing down. To mortify a person is to embarrass a person. So, in essence, he says, I'm going to prepare a table. I'm going to arrange plates in front of you at the king's table in the presence of the very people who try to embarrass you. And when they walk into the room and sit down at the table and you walk in, it's going to embarrass them. This is why I don't try to get folks back who try to embarrass me because God will embarrass you on a level unimaginable. He says, listen, the very folks who harassed you, I'm going to harass them with your future. The very folks who vexed you now, I'm going to vex them tomorrow. And I'm so glad that David caught the revelation that trouble don't last always. He says, I know the thoughts God has towards me. Thoughts of peace and not of evil to give me an expected end. I'm a shepherd now, but I'll be a king later. 
And some of you have to start declaring that over your life. Listen, I don't care that they're treating me like a peasant because there's a king in me. Somebody declare there's a king in me. There is a king. Oh, I'm sorry, it's sisters in here. There's a queen in me. I ain't going to leave y'all out. There is royalty in you. The Bible says this way. You are a peculiar people, a royal priesthood. I know I'm sitting in front of scraps right now, but I serve a God that as long as I'm following him, he'll lead me to a table and he'll arrange that table in the presence of the folks who never wanted me to eat. And here's the part that's really going to mess you up because nothing vexes a person more than this. And I'm about to mess up some of y'all theology because y'all done heard other big names, uh, big name preachers preach this thing. And it was like, yo, enemies going to have to watch you eat. They're going to have to watch you eat. But here's the part that's really going to stress them out. You ready? You sure you can handle this? Y'all ready? One, one, two, three, go. Y'all ready? You sure? Here's the part that's really going to mess them up. You going to serve them at the table. <laughs> Selfish people can't get with that. Because the selfish folks is saying, I just want them to watch me eat. No, no, no. Nothing will get under their skin more than you scooping out and giving to them. Ah, this is why the Bible says, don't return evil for evil, but return good for evil. Why? Because it says when you do it, it's like heeping coals on their head. I used to wonder how it was possible that Jesus washed the feet of Judas. Don't, don't miss that. Je Jesus didn't cuss Judas out. He washed his feet. Jesus ain't still off on them, like the young folks say. Some of y'all are like, what that mean? Don't worry about it. He washed his feet. Jesus ain't catch him outside. He washed his feet. That, 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 that puzzled me because I said, why, why would you give him clean feet to do you dirty? That, that don't make sense to me. But now it makes sense. Because when Judas would find out that what he thought was going to happen to me didn't happen to me, they hung me on a cross and I lived. He hung himself on a cross and he died. We serve a God that will turn the tables. And watch this. The folks who refuse to serve you, he'll put you in a position to serve them. Come on here! Because I'm going to tell you what hurts their pride so much when they need the one they said had nothing. Somebody say he prepares a table. I follow the Lord because I know that a time is coming yes. where he's going to prepare a table. Yes. That God has already made, okay, I don't know if y'all eat at fancy enough restaurants, but there are certain restaurants that you just can't walk in. <laughs> certain restaurants you just can't walk in, you have to have a reservation. In other words, you have to, before you get there, send a word before, amen, do it, Father. Uh, 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 you have to send word before that you're coming. And when you send word before that you're coming, they will prepare a place especially for you and watch this all you have to do is show up yes. don't miss that all you have to do is show up and here's the thing if you don't show up you miss it yes. right I need you to recognize because some of you are missing your reservation God has a place prepared for you already Stop letting folks talk you out of your reservation. Yeah, yeah. Can I help you? Some of you are missing the reservation because you expected certain people to be there Come with you. On, but some reservations are only for two. Yeah. Me and Jesus. Yeah. Sorry. He prepared a table before me. Yeah. And when you follow him, <laughs> even when folks make you feel like there's no place for you. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. You can be confident that he's prepared one for you. Yes. Somebody say he prepares a table before me. When you follow him, not only will he prepare a table before you, but he will pour oil on your head. Man, y'all making me work hard this morning. Right. He will pour oil on your head. I ain't making it up. It's the latter part of verse 5. He says, thou anointest my head with oil. My cup. Oh, you. Yes. Ooh. Bless his name. Thou preparest yes. a 
Oh, excuse me, thou anointest my head with oil. Mm, hallelujah. My cup runneth over. Yeah. Okay, let's let's break this thing down. Uh uh the oil, the oil, matter of fact, no, I'm gonna start with anoint. To anoint is the Hebrew word dashain. And this word dashain, it means to anoint, don't miss this, but it also means to set apart or grow fat. Oh, grow fat. Oh. You know you're strong in some of us. He says, I'm going to set you apart, but I'm also going to clone you. I'm going to multiply you. I'm going to enlarge your territory. He anoints my head. Now, now, here's the thing. That word anoint, it also means to smear. Mm -hmm. Wow. He says, I'm going to set you apart and I'm going to smear you with oil. And as a result of smearing oil on you, you're going to begin to enlarge. But, but what is this oil that he's smearing on me? Well, it's the word shemen. And that word shemen not, not only just means oil, but specifically olive oil. Olive oil. Ah. Come on. Ah. 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 A few more light bulbs to go off. Okay, y'all don't know how we get olive oil. Come on, come on. Ah. So, olive oil. In order to get the oil out of an olive, there is a process of crushing that has to happen. And that's why y'all are reserving your hallelujahs and amen. Because we want the oil. But we don't want to be crushed. He says, I will anoint your head with oil. I'm going to tell you why you should have shouted. Don't even try to shout after I say this. But you should have shouted because in essence what he's saying is that the thing that was designed to crush you, I'm going to use to set you apart. Don't shout now because y'all weren't with me at first. I'm going to set you apart with what the enemy thought was going to destroy you. And this is why the psalmist says it was good that I was afflicted. Because I would have never learned thy precepts. Some of you wouldn't be as faithful to God as you are. If you had never walked through a valley of a shadow of death, you wouldn't be as faithful as you are. If that booger didn't walk out on you, you wouldn't be as faithful as you are. If some church folks ain't throw you away, you wouldn't be as faithful as you are. If your job ain't slide you that piece you wouldn't be as faithful. It was good that I was afflicted because I serve a God who will take what came to crush me and set me apart with it. And nothing vexes a person more than to see the weapon formed against you turn back on them. Ah, he says, I, I, I will anoint your head with oil. My cup runs over. Now how do we go from the head to the cup? Yep. <laughs> go from the head to the cup. Now I got a vivid imagination so I was just trying to find a whole bunch of ways to make this work. I was like well maybe it's just like Psalm I think it's 133 where, where the oil hits the head and goes down the beard mm -hmm. and you know I'm thinking that that's the situation but but God was like no 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 that, that, that's, not, that's not the case. Uh, 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 the cup is a coast. It's the Hebrew word coast. And the word coast means not just cup, but cup of blessing. <sighs> it's the word coast. K-O-W-C. Coast. And it's not just a cup, but it's a cup of blessing. Here's where I messed up. I thought, this is what I thought. I thought that the oil had to come down the head and fill the cup. And God said, no, 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 the cup's already full. <laughs> I said, well, God, what is it full of? Bless. It's full of my blessing. Yes. Yes. Because when you're anointed, yes. your cup stays full of blessing. Yes. Ah. Now it makes sense. Wow. He says, I anoint you, mm -hmm. I smear. Mm -hmm. Ooh, but then I make you fat. Yeah. Yeah. Because with the anointing, huh? comes a cup of blessing. Yes. Oh, okay. Don't miss it, though. Because yes. Jesus was the Messiah. Uh -huh. And the word Messiah means anointed one. And there was a moment where he was praying in the garden. And he said, Lord, if it be possible, take this cup from me. I know why y'all don't want to be anointed. Because it don't just come with a cup of blessing. It comes with a cup of suffering. 
But don't miss the revelation of what Jesus said. If you're willing to suffer with me, take your reign with me. I know your cup is full of suffering in this season. But there's a season coming where it's going to be full of blessing. Just don't drop this cup until he sends you that cup. Because if you hold this cup, he'll make sure you hold the other one. He says, my cup runs over. Okay, it runs over. It runs over. It runs over. It's, it's the word uh, revaya. Revaya. And it means well feel. Uh, Sean, come help me real quick, bro. I need some help. It means uh, well feel. Now, <laughs> Try to get the anointing. So it's well filled. Now this ain't quite well filled. I got to well fill it. it. Says it means well filled. Now, revaya means well filled, but that ain't all it means. It also means saturated. saturated. What you say now? So it ain't just well feel. Jesus, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I said, um, I said, God, what are you saying? He said, um, when you're anointed, my God. Uh, oh my God, when you're anointed, I not only fill your cup with huh. blessings, but it runs over. Huh. I said, okay, that's cool. In other words, your cup will stay full of blessings, but not just full of blessings, surrounded by blessings. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so watch this. He says, it ain't just in you, it's on you. It's on you. <laughs> Can I tell you why you stress folks out when you walk in the room sometimes? Somebody say, because it's on me. Because it's on me. And folks don't believe you deserve it. But I'm so glad it ain't up to folks. Somebody say it's on me. Some folks said you would never be happy. But I'm glad it ain't up to folks. Somebody say it's on me. Somebody said you'll never be loved. But I'm so glad it ain't up to folks. It ain't just in me. It's on me. Some folks said you never start that business. Entrepreneurship would never be yours. I'm so glad it ain't in me. But it's also on me. I, I'm so glad that he doesn't just well fill my cup. But that which he puts in my cup, he saturates my life with it in such a way that wherever I go, I'm hitting blessings. Everywhere I go, I'm hitting blessings. And here's the thing, here's the thing. When life gets shaky, it's still on me. <laughs> this is why I don't care what's going on in the economy. Because I know what's in me. And I know what's on me. I don't care who get in the White House come November. I know what's in me. And I know what's on me. I don't care if they close the door to my job tomorrow. I know what's in me. And I know what's on me. I don't care who says hello or goodbye in my life. Because I know what's in me. And I know what's on me. And I'm smart enough to understand that what's in me and what's on me ain't got nothing to do with you. I need to say that again for somebody. I'm smart enough to know that what's in me and what's on me ain't got nothing to do with you. It was in me and on me when you came, and it's in me and on me when you left. Watch this, watch this. Even when I trip, it's in me. <laughs> he says, I will take, I will take 
what sets you apart and use it to set you up. And this is why you can't be ashamed of your testimony. Because your testimony is what set you apart. The trials and the temptations and the struggles that you went through. God said, I'm going to take those things the enemy sent to crush you. And they're going to be the very things that I use to set you apart. This is why some of y'all don't fit in anywhere you go. Because you've been crushed so much. You, you, you don't know how to fit in around folks who ain't never been through nothing. Because you've been through so much. And you will dumb yourself down trying to fit in with folks, watch this, who, who God sent you to to deliver them. <sighs> He'll use what set you apart. To set you up, mm. I will grow you fat out of what used to starve you. Mm. I will grow you fat out of what the enemy said uh, 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 would haunt you for the rest of your life. Mm. He anoints my head with oil. He pours oil on my head. Can, can y'all handle another one? Yes. I got one more. Yes. <sighs> he will allow goodness and mercy to pursue uh, you. Thank you. Yes, thank you. He will allow goodness and mercy to pursue you. Appreciate you, my brother. Somebody say, he will allow, he will allow goodness, goodness and, mercy and mercy to follow me. To follow oh, excuse me, me, to pursue me. To pursue me. I ain't making it up. It's verse 6. He says, surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. That sounds so beautiful. But y'all don't even know what y'all are saying. Jesus. Okay. Surely. This word surely is the Hebrew word ak. A-K. Ak. And it not only means surely. It means no doubt. <laughs> okay. Okay. He said. That when I'm following the Lord. I have no doubt. That goodness and mercy are following me. Amen. I said that too fast. He said, when I'm following him, I have no doubt that goodness and mercy are following me. Which means if goodness and, and mercy ain't following me, I must not be following him. If I'm not sure that goodness and mercy are following me, then maybe I've stopped following him. He said, surely, surely, without a doubt, there, there, there's no question that goodness and mercy are following me. And the reason y'all ain't shouting is because y'all don't understand what goodness and mercy is. Mm -hmm. Let's look at this thing. Uh, the word goodness is the word tov in Hebrew. T-O-W-B, tov. And it doesn't just mean goodness. It means welfare, <laughs> prosperity, <laughs> and happiness. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> sure. Okay, okay. Somebody say good ain't good enough. Good ain't good enough. King James missed it on this one. Uh -huh. Surely his welfare, his prosperity, and his happiness are following me. I have no doubts that his welfare, his prosperity, and his happiness are behind me. And maybe I don't know that his welfare and his prosperity uh, and his happiness are behind me because I'm tripping over what's in front of me. Yes, and maybe I'm tripping over what's in front of me because I stopped following the Lord. Yes. Goodness and mercy. Now, mercy, mercy, mercy is a little different. And, and this one. You might throw a chair on this one. So if you sit next to a crazy praiser, just duck when I say this. It's the word kased. Mercy is the word kased. Bishop, I, I know why you're standing up. It doesn't just mean mercy, but it means kindness. Hold up. But it also means fidelity. It's one of the big SAT words. That's why you call the AL3C. Fidelity means faithfulness. <laughs> he said that God's welfare, uh -huh. 
prosperity, mm -hmm. happiness, mm -hmm. and faithfulness yes. Yes. are behind me. I don't know what's happening, Bishop. Here's why you ought to be shouting. Because you ain't faithful. I said what I said. I know y'all. Y'all ain't faithful. That's why Pastor. Keep preaching, sir. But God is so good. Even though you're not faithful in following me, my faithfulness follows you. And here's why I want to jump over this podium. Because God has been faithful to me in some of my worst moments. God has been faithful to me ooh, when I was nasty. God was faithful to me when I was in all kinds of mess. Great is thy faithfulness. Great is thy faithfulness. Morning by morning, new mercies I see. My, I'm so glad that even in my unfaithfulness, his faithfulness mm -hmm. followed me. Because watch this. I may not always be faithful, but I can still make a decision to always follow. Yeah. And here's where the church got you messed up. Uh, they think that if you mess up, you ain't following. But sometimes I can trip while I'm following you. It just means I missed what you stepped over. But it don't mean I ain't still following. Yeah. And as long as I'm following, yes. he said, my faithfulness Follow. follows you. Yes. I'm preaching in here. Yes. 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 But that ain't it. That ain't it. He says he will allow goodness and mercy to follow me all the days of my life. And, and, and that word follow, that word follow is the word radoff. Radoff. And it means pursue. But I told you that the Hebrew and the Greek languages are very picturesque. There's normally a word picture that goes with the word. And when I saw the word picture that goes with this word, it messed me up. Because the pursue is as a dog chasing you. Mm. <laughs> what you say? What you say now? Y'all, y'all, y'all make me work real hard. They, ain't okay. no dog them, they, they clearly ain't never had a dog chase them. And it tails. He says, my goodness and mercy are going to chase you down like a dog. You clearly ain't never been chased by a dog. Because a dog will not stop until it gets you. He says, when you follow me, my goodness and mercy chase you like a dog. Okay, there's a particular dog that's called a bloodhound. What's interesting about the bloodhound, they normally use these dogs when they have to like track somebody. Because these dogs have super sensitive noses. All the dog needs is a smell. It don't have to see you. Nope. It just needs a smell. Bishop, know where I'm going. All it needs is a smell. Bishop, this word just for me and you, bro. All it needs is a smell. I'm going to tell you why this is messing me up. And why some of y'all ought to shout when I say this. Because worship is described as a fragrance. And the reason I know, uh -uh, don't shout now. The reason I know his goodness and mercy follow me, because I always put off a fragrance. And this is why I don't stunt y'all on Sunday morning. When you sit there with your arms crossed and your legs crossed and your eyes crossed, I lift up my hands, I open up my mouth, because I need to let off a fragrance. Because goodness and mercy are looking for me, and I don't need them to miss me. Yes, I am. My soul. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you God. There was a young lady, Bishop. 
who lived in a neighborhood that was on a hill. They lived on an incline. And so because she was so little, her legs weren't strong enough to get up the hill. And so her dad would push her up the hill. She got older and he would still push her up the hill. But there came a time where daddy had to start working late. But she still wanted to ride her bike. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. And so the daddy came up with a plan. He constructed a large poster board and he attached it to the back of her bike. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Because her legs were now strong enough to get up the hill. Yes, sir. But she was scared of what was behind her. Uh -huh. So what he did was got a big poster board of himself. Uh -huh. So when she looked behind her, she didn't see what she was scared of. She saw her daddy. Yes, sir. She saw the love of her father. Yes, sir. What am I saying? I said, God, why do goodness and mercy follow us all the days? He says, I need to change your view. Yes, sir. You're used to trouble chasing you. I need you to get used to blessings chasing you. So when I look behind myself now, I don't see my troubles. I don't see my mistakes. I don't see my failures. But I see the blessings of the Father. I see the peace of the Father. I see the mercy of the Father. I see the joy of the Lord, which is my strength. And like the Energizer Bunny, I keep going and going and going. Why? Because what's behind me is greater than what's ahead. Come on! Thank you, Jesus. You allow goodness and mercy. Thank you, Jesus. To pursue us. Jesus. Jesus. 12 19. I'm almost past my time. Like a good spade's hand, I got a possible. Can I give you one more? Come on. The reason you want to follow the Lord is because He will prepare a table before you. He will pour oil on your head. He will allow goodness and mercy to pursue you. But last but not least, He will allow you to remain in His presence. Mm. Oh, thank you. Yeah. He will allow you mm -hmm. to remain in his presence. Oh, I'm not making it up. He says, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord. I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Now, Bishop, I, you know, I know a little Hebrew and Greek and, and, and I got ahead of myself in my study. I know that Bethel means house of the Lord. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So what I expected to see when I looked at this in the Hebrew was Bethel, mm -hmm. the house of the Lord. But when I looked at the Hebrew, mm -hmm. it wasn't Bethel. It was Bayith. Bayith. And Bayith does not mean the house of the Lord. It means a house. Mm. <laughs> Come on, man. Uh -huh. Lord have mercy. Gotcha. So it's not really I will dwell in the house uh, of the Lord, it's I will dwell in a house. house. Right. Mm -hmm. Wow. My spidey senses are okay. okay. yes. yes. I will okay. in the house. Yes, sir. Okay. I will dwell in a house uh -huh. uh, okay. of the Lord. Okay, what does it mean to dwell? The word dwell is yasha, and it means to sit. So I will sit in a house of the Lord. Okay, we're sitting in a house of the Lord. But it doesn't just mean sit. It also means remain. In other words, live. Now, Unless y'all trying to pay rent, you ain't living here. Yes, sir. I said what I said. Come on, sir. You can sit here, but that ain't what he's talking about. Mm -hmm. He says, I'll sit in a house of the Lord. That's, that's what we're doing this morning. But, but, but also, I believe he's going towards the latter because I think he's talking about another time. Mm -hmm. I don't think he's talking about the now, at least not in this sense. I, I think it's, 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 it's unilateral. And what I mean by that is, he says, um, there's a time coming where I'm going to live in a house yes. of 
the Lord. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's funny. Jesus, uh, he, he's talking about the resurrection. And he says, um, let not your hearts be troubled. Mm -hmm. You believe in God. Mm -hmm. Believe also in me. In my father's house are many mansions. And if it were not so, I would have told you. But I go to prepare a place for you that where I am, you may be also. Okay, let me break this thing down. He says, um, in my father's house mm -hmm. yes. are many houses mm -hmm. yes. and I go to prepare a house for you that where I am, you may be also. Mm -hmm. David is talking about salvation before salvation. Mm -hmm. yes, sir. David understands like Job declared, I know my redeemer lives. Yes, sir. I've never seen him, but I know my, re in other words, he said, I know this ain't it. Mm -hmm. This is good. But this ain't it. That that when I close my eyes on this side, this and side? David is moving in the prophet. When I close my eyes on this side, yeah. I'm in a field today, but I'll be in a house tomorrow. Yeah. And it ain't just any house. That's right. It's a house within a house. Yes, sir. It's a mansion. Yes, sir. And God has prepared one for me. And I will live there forever. Thank you, Y'all are working too hard because many of you are still trying to work for salvation. You're still trying to be good enough to get in. You're still trying to make enough connections. You're still trying to serve in the church. You're trying to do all these things to get to the house of the Lord. And David gives us the secret here. Bishop, I wonder why when Jesus goes out to start calling his disciples, mm -hmm. he said one thing. Follow me. He said, follow me. Because as long as you follow me, you'll end up where I am. Y'all miss it. He didn't call his disciples and say, join a church. Yeah. He said, follow me. Cool. He didn't call his disciples and say, serve on the usher board. He said, follow, follow me. And the reason some folks going to miss heaven ain't got nothing to do with wow. what they do wrong. Mm -hmm. It's that you didn't follow him. Mm -hmm. If you're going to be my disciple, yes. this is what he says. If any man would come after me, he must deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. And there's the problem. We don't mind following him until we get to the cross. Oh, yeah. That's uh, my God, that's good. But what I'm discovering is that if you can't follow him to the cross, Jesus. you ain't gonna make it to the house. My God. <laughs> my God. David says, I've walked through the valley of the shadow of death. In other words, I've been through my cross. Yeah. <laughs> and because I survived the cross, ah, there's Hallelujah. a house yes. with my name. Yes. I'm not yes. confident that I'm going to heaven because I'm a pastor. I'm not confident that I'm going to heaven because I cross every T and dot every I. I'm not confident that I'm going to heaven because I do a bunch of nice stuff. I'm not confident that I'm going to heaven because I didn't gave up a bunch of sins. I know I'm going to heaven because I know who I'm following. And Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but by me. If I follow you, I'll be on my way to hell. But because I'm following him, heaven is my home. And I have no doubts about it because I've made up my mind that following Jesus is it. And everything else, y'all can keep it. Yes, that's it. That's just righteousness. And here's how I know I ain't gonna lose my salvation, Bishop. Wow. Because he says I'll do it forever. <laughs> forever don't stop, Bishop. Yes, sir. So if I'm gonna do it forever, ain't no end to it. Yes, sir. You can stop if you want to. Right. But I'm gonna dwell forever. 
Because to be absent from this body is to be present with the Lord. Here's the full circle moment. That to follow him means I stay in his presence. Yes. And if I continue in his presence, I will end at his presence. I know I'm going to heaven because I stay in the presence. I don't just sit in it on Sunday. I live in it on Monday. And I live in it on Tuesday. And I live in it on Wednesday. And I live in it on Thursday. And I live in it on Friday. And I live in it on Saturday. And when I say amen, I'm going to walk out these doors and keep on living. Yes, Lord. He says, I will dwell in the house of the Lord. Some of you may never own a home here on earth. But if anyone ever asks you if you're a homeowner, you ought to tell them, yep. And if they ask you where your home is, it's with Jesus. 